Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison. Now, it's been really difficult for me to actually get a video out here for you guys for this week. Uh, so, I've been able to get you guys a speed painting as well as um, this video right here, where I'm going to basically detail a few things that I've learned about Krita that I didn't know earlier uh, that I would have taught you guys from the very beginning. And uh, so basically, as soon as Krita just pops up, I'll be able to help you out there. And then at the tail end of this video, I have some news about my channel and uh, just some exciting stuff uh, that I'd like to share with you guys. Okay, so Krita's loaded up, okay? Now, in order for me to bring up the tool options uh, it, right here, I have to wait, actually load up an actual project. Now here sometimes you'll see the tool options as a docker and sometimes you'll see it up here and there is a, there are benefits to having it up here. That's why I have it up here because I enjoy like when, whenever I interact with Photoshop or any other image editing uh, software the tool options are always somewhere up here in some way and to have it as a button that I can access is really nice. But the downside to it is if I need to use the measuring tool, I'm not able to actually see my measurement as I'm actually measuring. It's only after the fact that I can actually see the measurement. That's a pain in the ass. Um, I can right click and go detach from toolbar and sometimes this works and sometimes not. Um, like I honestly I, I don't understand how the how it works like okay so for right now it's working if I move it oh no it's not working let's see if it'll work again okay this is kind of a fluke to be honest for it to work as reliably where it's actually measuring as I'm measuring like for this to just stay as a constant pop-up that's actually very rare I don't know if it's a bug or whatever it is, but it's a it's a gigantic pain in my butt. So whenever I need to do a measurement and actually see my measurement as I'm measuring, uh, like I have shown you guys um, in my four-point curvilinear perspective uh, tutorials, where I have to have four, I actually five vanishing points and I have to measure out four equal distances. Um, that right there, uh, it's impossible to do most of the time with the docker up here, with the tool options up here. So one way that you can fix that is you can go uh, configure Krita from settings, okay? So let me repeat that. So settings, configure Krita, and then you go tools, and then in docker. Okay, if you want it up here at the top, you go in toolbar. If you want it in the dockers, you need to click in docker. Okay, and at first you won't see anything. So what you need to do is you need to close down Krita, load it up again. And the thing is for me, I so rarely have to have it as a docker that it's totally worth my time to just save whatever I'm doing, close Krita and and get it going again. All right, so we have it. We can now see the tool options docker is right here. And as I'm measuring, um, actually I got the wrong tool selected. And as I'm measuring, you can actually see the measurement right here calculating upwards as I'm measuring. So that's really useful to see. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is actually with the brush. Now some of us, we have styluses that uh, have erasers on the end. So basically if we need to erase, we just flip our stylus over and then erase like it's a pencil. Well, ever since I bought my Intuos, um, I actually haven't had an eraser side to my stylus. So the, and, and I can't be the only one in this. So what you need to do is you need to basically right click and then you go basically into the section that you log you like. I created this section 
So I got my eraser selected and I got my brush selected. So when I start drawing, I obviously have my brush selected. But since I had just previously selected the eraser, all I need to do is press the slash button. Okay, oops, well, okay. Now the eraser is set to be an eraser. So there you have it. But here's something interesting. If I want to have quick access to now having my brush and then having basically this, uh, what is it called? The shape fill tool, okay? I can just use that slash button and just quickly uh, switch between the two. Another thing that's kind of cool is if I press E or if I press up here, I can get my select fill to work like this strange, gigantic, enormous eraser if I want. Uh, of course, it takes processing time for that to work like that. So the next thing that I want to show you guys, it has to do with the assistant, okay? So let's say I make my assistant and uh, one second here I think I might have pressed wrap by accident okay so let's say I start making some really useful assistants okay and let's say I want to reuse these assistants again at a later date or let's say I don't need them anymore but I'm not quite sure if I'll need them later on um, let's say uh, it's just like okay I don't need them anymore I can just delete oh and then then 10 minutes later oh no I wish I didn't delete that one that's uh, that's something that I've experienced on multiple occasions so what you can do is actually save them you can actually go save uh, delete me okay and so if I go delete all they all got, got deleted let's say I'm still working on the same project and uh, I realize oh I need all those assistants back again I can go open and I, I created my own file for this and so I go ahead and select here open and I have all the exact same assistants all in the exact same position as they were earlier I can do this indefinitely I can just see the exact same like layout of assistance every single time so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that oops why did I press open now the next thing that I'd like to talk about is the transformation tool okay so let's say we have a shape okay let's just make this star okay now let's say this there, like there's going to be a number of stars but you you want to have a duplicate of it but you need to have it flipped the other way what you can do is you can use any of the selection tools oops any of the selection tools and you select it okay and then you press control T or you just go right over to this transform a layer or selection okay you go to that tool or press control T and you can you can do all sorts of transformations you can uh, transform it uh, or rotate it um, you can make it small you can make it thin you can make it fat whatever okay uh, but we want it at the same size as it has been now you can now if we want to flip it how do you do that well you could go like that but that's you're kind of not quite sure as to what you're doing so the best way the, the way to flip something is basically this okay so we got the transformation tool um, let's see one second here um, we can go rotate okay now if you mess around with the x-axis that pulls it into kind of like perspective as if you're trying to create the ground okay and you can flip it if you do a full 180 you can flip it that way or um, if we don't want that um, what we can do is um, let me revert it back to its original shape you can actually flip it horizontally by messing with the y-axis okay and you do a 180 and then 
it's flipped the opposite direction. Okay, so it was originally like that, and uh, what we did is we we flipped it the other direction. Like you can you can clearly see that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can also mess with the z-axis. Um, let's uh, let's see what the z-axis does. Okay, so it just rotates it um, like like I guess clockwise. So that's pretty cool. Okay, now there's other options that you can do with the the transformation tool. Okay, so um, one thing that is really easy to do is to realize that not to realize that there's a slider here. So you need to make sure that you slide slide the slider all the way up and you can actually do some cool stuff. You can click on this one and that allows you to actually kind of manipulate the object into perspective. And that that can be pretty useful. I've used it on occasion and so that's pretty useful. <clears throat> Another thing that you can do is you can click this warp tool here. And so you click on the object and basically it has a number of nodes that you can use to basically transform it and it took me a little while to figure out how to how to use this thing um, especially effectively um, but like you can see these little circles and you can move them around and uh, just kind of manipulate the object and as you can see once I press enter it starts looking pretty funky. Now, if I press Control Z, come on, Control Z. Okay, so, and and bring it back. I can actually change how many little circles I got. So now I have a whole bunch of them, and so I can really kind of fine tune some some changes to this thing. But here's something that's that's pretty important to know. Um, now, okay, the more nodes that you have, the little subdivisions that you have, the longer it's going to take for it to render it once you press enter. And sometimes the results don't quite look the way that you want them to or the way that the preview uh, displayed that it would look. So you just need to be aware of that. So <clears throat> let's say you have a number of objects, okay? Let me just delete this object and Control shift a alright so we're gonna go ahead and create the same star but we're gonna do it on a variety of levels okay so uh, or I'm, I'm sorry yeah um, layers we're gonna do this on a variety of layers so I have one line here I create a new layer I have another line right here create a new layer create another one create another layer draw another line create a new layer and then draw another line. Now there's a lot of times when you're going to be drawing where you're going to have different aspects of a character or something on a variety of layers. And then you're going to be like, well, I want to transform something. So you try to select the object. Uh, oops, let me select it better. And so you go control T and you move it and it only move the one thing. Oh, dang it. Yeah, and, and you might be like just telling yourself, oh shoot, I have this on all these different layers and I don't want to necessarily uh, combine them all into one, like to merge all these layers yet or ever. So what do I do? How do I, how do I mess with the warp tool and, and warp all of it because I really need to? Do I need to redraw the whole thing? The answer is no, you don't. Basically, you can just select all the layers and then uh, right click and go group, quick group, or you could just press Control G, okay? <clears throat> so they're now all in a group. So you select the group itself, okay, just the group, and now you can go ahead and do your transformation, okay? You can, you can, go ahead and do your transformation to all of those layers all in one fell swoop and you can use the transformation not, not the, the the this tool right here this portion of it where you can just go ahead and and scale it up scale it down move its position and press enter ta-da okay so I hope this is helpful all right so that pretty much covers the 
Krita oriented portion of this video. The next portion of this video actually deals with some collaborations that I'm working on. Um, the first one that I have going on that I'd like to mention is actually with Noble, Noble Frugal Studios. Now, a long time ago I approached him, asked him if he wanted me to draw a background for him, and it's only until recently that he's taken me up on that offer, and that's awesome. The next one is actually kind of interesting. Um, one moment here. Uh, the next thing that I'd like to talk about is James Shannon. He volunteered to do this, and I'm actually happy as can be. So you guys have, well, some of you guys have seen this. Um, kind of disappointed that no one really wanted to see me sculpting my avatar, but I did. And uh, James, I've known James ever since I was in high school. He's a really good kid, and really appreciate this guy. He's, if, if you look at these videos here, he's actually, with ZBrush, he is sculpting my avatar so that I can have a digital version of my avatar. That is so cool. I'm so happy that he's doing that. And some information about James. James Shannon is just about to graduate college, and he's been learning all about, gra like, video game graphics and animation everything that you could possibly want to learn about how to sculpt and design things in a computer and uh, he's he's he can output some really good quality uh, even in high school his drawing and sculpting skills were phenomenal now uh, James he always thought that I was pretty good at at artwork he, he saw me make this one particular sculpture and he just thought wow that is an artiste and I'm, I'm actually quoting him uh, but he's the one that won uh, the fantasy art contest I, I never I never won any art contest ever and uh, I, I'm telling you like if you guys are if any of you guys have ZBrush or Maya or anything like that this guy is the guy to learn from uh, he really is, um, but he's just barely getting started. As you can see, he's only got two subscribers, and I'm one of them. And so, you know, just give the guy some love. Like, this guy, he he could use the attention, and he, quite frankly, he deserves it. Anyways, so uh, the last um, collaboration that I'll mention is uh, with Blender Beetle. Now just like noble frugal studios and blender blender beetle is a lot like him and that blender beetle and noble frugal studios have been around since the very beginning of open tunes which wasn't too long ago but they were making tutorials before i arrived on the scene and so um i'm happy to say that i have a collaboration with both of them however with blender beetle from what I understand pretty soon here she's going to have a video that's going to kind of have a kind of feature uh, a character that I helped design um, and, and he in her next video a character that I helped design with her is going to be in her next video and uh, so I'm really happy to see that uh, but the the project that blender beetle and I are working on it's kind of a kind of a huge project a huge undertaking for for two um two animators to try to tackle and uh you know we both have personal lives we both have our youtube channels we have deadlines we have stuff that we got to do and it's really difficult for us to do this so uh it's going to be a while since you guys see this collaboration but yeah um that's the news for the channel. That's the information that I have to share about Krita. And uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If this tutorial and video in general has been enjoyable or educational in any way, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you don't like it, it whatever, just please like, share, and subscribe anyways. Like, <laughs> seriously, have a great day.